try. Uh, Mears, he's a um, young, developing tight head prop. He's played a bit on the loose head side as well, but we've signed him um, as a tight head, as a developing tight head prop. I first spotted Mears um, over at Mauritius in the 10s in 2016 it was. Um, and what was evident there is that he's a pretty dynamic, powerful, very good speed for a, for a front rower. Um, so he's got that athletic ability. Um, and our plan is to make sure that we continue to, that he grows on, on those skills and, and just make sure that he's bread and butter as a scrummager, as a line-out player, lifter, maul, all those sort of things that we keep developing those areas. So he's a good footballer. He's got a history of, I guess, producing some pretty good pops through here lately. Mm. Just hoping, you know, you can uh, get him up to, uh, to speed pretty quickly. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we've got, obviously, Scotty, Alan, Al Alatoa, um, Les Macon there. There's guys there, Benny Alexander, with enormous experience. So, And the good part about those guys as well is they're happy to share their knowledge and make sure that everyone's improving and and, um, and learning off one another. So, um, you know, he's got some good coaches to work with, Mears, and he's also got some good players with, um, with a number of uh, international and, and super rugby caps behind them. Dan, I read that uh, Jake White spotted him in South Africa five or six years ago. When you saw him in Mauritius, did you put a few calls in to see what this bloke is like? Uh, oh, look, no, at that point in time, we, he's just sort of someone you put in the memory bank. Um, and if ever a day comes up that he's, uh, that he's available and you look at it and consider it, I think at that point in time he was happy at the force and we were reasonably comfortable at the Brumbies. So, but as it turns out, um, he's got an opportunity to come to Canberra and, and we're really pleased to have him. A few force boys might be making the trip over there. Does, over here, does that help to help him settle in a bit with some familiar faces? Yeah, I think so. I mean, is he nice or He's confirmed and... and uh, yeah, there'll be some announcements next week, but um, yeah, just that familiarity. Look, I think Canberra, big country town really, isn't it? And the Brumbies guys certainly look after each other. We like to think we've got a pretty good culture and environment here where we look after, the players look after one another, families look after one another. Um, and this will be no different. It'll be a seamless transition for him. But to have that familiarity with four or five or however many it is that, uh, that come here from the force, and yeah, that I suppose makes it a little bit easier for him. Can you expand this? Are you able to expand the squad? Is that... What's going to happen? Look, I think that's the likelihood, Tim, is that, um, you know, there's, I think there was 20 plus contracted players at the force um, and their contracts need to be um, upheld. So, and, and leaving guys um, without, without jobs, it, you know, the reality is that they've got to increase the, the, the number of, of players in each squad. So, in the past where we've had 30 um, CPS and 5 EPS contracts, I, I think that'll increase. So, how many? full-time contracted players, do you reckon you'll end up with? Here? Oh, look, is it 30, 37, 38, I'd imagine, around that number there, with a couple of guys on development contracts. Okay, and you would need then to increase the salary cap, wouldn't you, to fit them all in? Uh, well, that's not for me to worry about, you know, the financial side of things. I just do the <laughs> recruitment, pick the side, and then I'll let that, leave that up to Michael and the ARU to sort out the numbers. Okay. So from that recruitment perspective, how do you think things <coughs> are looking going into the pre-season? Yeah, we're really happy, really happy with, uh, with our squad. Um, look, I think... Uh, you know, we've lost some experienced players, Scott Fardy, those sort of guys, but we've brought in some really exciting young talent and, and some good players, you know, guys that are, that are established players. So uh, I think we've got pretty good coverage in, in most positions and that's what you need. You need depth in this competition because reality is we're going to strike a period in the season where we'll have injury and you need to make sure that um, you're not just relying on 23 players. It's going to take the full squad to, um, to do well in the Super Rugby Comp. Dan, are uh, redheads tougher footballers? Oh, I'm in 100%. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm a firm believer that, that Redheads have got something special about them, mate, and, and I'm sure that you're no different. <laughs> when did you arrive, mate, and what are your first impressions? Well, I arrived last night on uh, about 6.30. It was pretty good coming here uh, at daytime, seeing what camera looks like. It's very good. Um, I'm from country town myself, and it's like a big country city, so I'm pretty happy to be here. And how did the move kind of happen from the force, obviously, with it being Axe? Talk us through kind of the last couple of months. Oh, it's been pretty hectic, but like, um, it's not good what happened there, but uh, I'm ready to put that behind me and just start on a new page here and um, see what I can do for the Brumbies, what I can offer, so, yeah. Were you, were you worried about your future for a bit there, or? Um, definitely you worry about your future, because um, that's your life, that's what you do, and uh, yeah, but I'm very fortunate to get the opportunity to come here to the Brumbies, so, yeah, definitely worried, but I'm happy to be here now, so. What's um, the most exciting thing do you think about linking up with the Brumbies? Oh, it's a, it's a big brand and they've got a very good track record of developing international props. So uh, it's pretty exciting. They've got the likes of Alan Alatoa that they developed into a world-class player, Scotty Sia. 
David Pocock, all the boys. Excited to meet them all? We, oui. sorry. <laughs> um, ah. Yeah, excited to meet them all when they all Jeez. come back in. Ah, just one. Yeah. Crown beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, very excited to meet them all. Uh, um, I've heard a lot about all of them from the other pl all the players at the force, um, saying they're all good guys and everything. So yeah, very excited. Bit of competition here for the prop, isn't there? Yeah, there's very strong competition there, but uh, that's always a good opportunity to push yourself. If there's no competition, how are you going to develop into a better player? So I'm very excited about the challenge and to learn as much as possible. So that's all good. Jesus. <laughs> I saw a clip of you racing down the wing. Do you pride yourself on your speed for a bit of a bigger bloke? Oh, I would say um, I back myself against the backline players. They don't like to hear that. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I like to just uh, carry with the ball and uh, enjoy the game. Is it true Jake White spotted you? Yeah, Jake White um, in my second year at the Sharks really helped me with some of my uh, game areas. And, uh, yeah, he was one of the guys that believed in me and... Uh, uh, yeah, he's the one basically that started me off, so if he's dead, I just would like to thank him. And Caitlin mentioned it before, kind of being a bit nervous about your future. Going to four teams, there's obviously less contracts on offer. Do you feel kind of lucky to not only be playing Super Rugby, but at a club like the Brumbies? I'm, f I'm feeling very fortunate to be able to, first of all, get a contract into, at the, I would say, one of the best brand. they number one on the conference this year, so yes, I do feel very fortunate to come here.